Uh, no, don't change the channel. So we're going to talk about something that I've been asked about quite a bit recently. Um, and that is, is that, you know, how do you, how do you get customers? How do you find customers? I was talking about it again. I was interviewing somebody earlier today and she was asking about leads and lead costs. And do you have to buy leads and what, you know, all, and no, you don't. We, we've always said that you don't need to buy leads to succeed in this business. It just leads are leverage. It allows you to scale your income. It allows you to have a certain amount of guarantee that you're going to be talking to somebody every week, five, 10, 15, 20 people, whatever it is that has an interest in your product rather than the, where I, how I learned the business working with New York live 40 some odd years ago was using the phone book. Many of you don't know what that is. Um, it was a public directory of people's phones. It was a big book with everybody's phone number and address in it. Yeah, it was name and address. Can you imagine that for privacy issues today? Um, and name and address on it. And we went, we had, we just, we opened the phone book up wherever our finger landed. We started dialing and we had a conversation with them about talking to them about life insurance, uh, financial retirement planning, that kind of thing. And folks, that was rejection. At least at some time they had an interest in their product. Doesn't mean they're going to, they're going to buy. It's a name and a phone and permission to call because they had an interest at some point. And we've already discussed that. Right. So, um, but that's how we started the business. And, and, and then, and then of course we worked our warm market. We found, we, we were able, we learned how to talk to people about the products that we have and, and generate interest in a, in a, in a short order. So uh, Angela used to do a training at some uh, year, years ago called the box top training. And what that really was about was, you know, um, wherever you spend your money, you should be talking to them about what you have to offer them and their families, which is life insurance, final expense, debt free for life, whatever. If you spend money in their establishment, they don't have to buy from you, but they def definitely have to listen to you or go somewhere else uh, and spend your money there. Angela, you want to talk about that uh, real, real quickly or what? You know, I think, uh, I think that um, one of the things that we don't spend enough time on, and that is remembering who we know. And so that, that training that I had done was, um, uh, was really designed to try and help you kind of jog your memory as to who you know. Because a lot of people will say, well, you know, we, uh, we, we, we only have one, our one son and we only have, you know, we, only, we have a very limited family or something like that. Or we live out in the country. We don't have a lot of neighbors. Instead of, instead of utilizing the excuses to who you don't know, um, sit down. And the way I always used to tell people to do it was get a, a legal pad um, get a notebook, get something that you're not going to, you know, here, one of the main problems that you used to tell people is, you know, you'd think about your aunt Mary and you'd write her name down, call aunt Mary and you'd, you'd put it on a post-it note. And then this post-it note would get, you know, mixed in with the grocery list and, you know, the bills are thrown away or, a, you know, if it's like my desk, it's buried underneath everything else. Um, and you lose it. So that list, it's gotta be a list, right? It's gotta be written down has to be written down and it's got to be all in one place. So it should be on a notebook, on a legal pad, you know, right. Um, and the next thing that I recommend that everybody do is get your cell phone out and, you know, go to your contacts in your cell phone. And I know you can't see it because my screen is on too bright, but you know, when you go to the contacts in your cell phone, I have contacts in here because I'm too lazy to clean it out. Uh, I have contacts in my cell phone that go back. Ugh, I hit on somebody's name the other day. That goes back 10 years, right? We don't think about them because we think about the people that we've called in the last 24 hours yeah. or that we've texted with in the last week. We don't, we don't sit and go, you know, letter by letter of the alphabet and pick out all of those names. Oh gosh, Chris, I haven't talked to this guy, Chris in ages. What a great opportunity to send him a message and say, Hey, Chris, I was just thinking about you and I wanted to see how I wanted to check in. How are you and your family doing? And he'll say, Oh, Angela, you know, I, I mean, how often does this happen? It happens on Facebook. It happens on LinkedIn. It happens on Instagram. Um, and somebody will say, uh, Oh my gosh, I was that. How amazing to hear from you. How are you? What are you up to? All I want people to ask. I want to ask how they're doing and I want them to ask how I'm doing 
because inevitably people will share what they're doing and what they've been up to. So the contacts list in your phone is huge, 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 because you can't even imagine how many contacts you save forever and ever and ever um, that you don't, of people that you don't necessarily think about or, you know, interact with very often. I have 1200 contacts in here and I probably talk to the same five people most days. The and second, every single person needs our product. Even if they already have some, they need more. They need more. The other thing that I tell, I always recommend, and I was doing this the other day when I was trying to unsuccessfully clean out my desk. So I haven't cleaned it out. Is business cards. Oh my gosh. Don't you go places and you get business cards, right? Every day. Every day. Every day. Um, everywhere I go buy something. When I buy a tractor, a car. Last night, what did I do when we left the dealership, Angela? Handed out business cards. I handed business cards out to everybody I met that day. I, the finance guy, the sales guy, the general manager, and, and, and the general sales manager all had my car when I left. Every single one of them. Right. And it enabled, enabled me to have a conversation with them, with every single one about what we do. But, um, you know, I'm in a lot of businesses, especially we live in a relatively small kind of podunky town. We live in a small town. And uh, it still has a very kind of... Um, small town feel to it when you go into a lot of businesses. So a lot of businesses have uh, business card bulletin boards, right? I don't think that that is necessarily a great way to build your business or get business, but why would you not put a, throw a business card up on there? Um, I think having a conversation with somebody is probably better. Yeah, but you never know. All things work. You never know, bit. right? Uh, you know, and it doesn't, it, yeah. I mean, social media, I don't right. like it. I don't want to be, I, I don't like, you know, but again, right. all things work a little bit. You never know. Yeah. We all, I used to, when I did this training years ago, Angela, I used to call it fishing. Yep. You throw a line in the water, right? And, right. Uh, and, and there's four sides to a boat right? <laughs> or whatever it is, right? So you have a line on the, on the left, line on the right, front, front and rear. And you never know where the, where the fish are biting. It's just about having a conversation. You can do what I do, which is free. You can just talk to people and make sure you, and you remember the basics of, of, of what I've been saying to you for a long time, which is people don't buy life insurance. They buy what life insurance does. And, you know, I, I've sold, you know, five, 10 apps a month strictly by talking. No, no leads. And what that enables you to do is it enables you to, to cause, because we get paid so well. If you were to sell five or 10 apps in a month, you'd have several thousand dollars to put towards leads. Leads are a good thing. It depends on what your income goals are. But leads, as I said earlier, it allows you to know you're going to talk to a guaranteed certain number of people per week that are interested in your product. Right. It also allows you to scale your income. More leads equal more conversations. More conversations equal more applications and families protected. Period. Same in coal market. If you're if you're out there buying a car or you're out there buying a tractor or you're out there, whatever you're doing, if you're having conversations, the more of those conversations you have, the more possibilities you have of swinging the bat and pitching your product and finding a family to protect. Period. You don't have to buy leads, but leads allow you to scale your income because those other methods as I mentioned before, equal email marketing, creating a blog, you know, uh, networking in your community, prospecting, you know, with uh, doing lunch and learns and partnering with other professionals like realtors or mortgage brokers, um, you know, all those things work. Putting your business card in a laundromat might hook somebody. The fish might be biting. You never know who's, who's going to put their eyes on that business card. It's cheap and it's, a, and it, and it, and it's effective. Right. You never know. But all those things work a little bit. But here's what I know. And that is, is that if I buy leads, I'm going to I can guarantee I'm going to have those conversations with people consistently every single week, all throughout the year. Right. And I need that guarantee and that security that I'm going to be talking to people that have an interest in my product rather than these other methods where you're trying to create the interest. We've already created the interest for you with the lead. That's the difference. You can um, dial in your income by working leads. That's the difference. Do you have to? Absolutely not. You should do all of these things. It's just like what we talk about with the leads. You should text them. You should call them. You should go knock on the door, resolve the lead. Don't get pigeonholed into one method 
Angela and I buy leads. I also run ads in, on, on, for, for new agents on, on the job networks. I also talk to people. I just generate conversation. Wherever I go, I'm always pitching my product. What's that movie? Always be, always be closing? I'm always looking for opportunities. And it's easy for me because when I started the business, that's all we had. We didn't have leads. We had to generate interest in our product with people that may or may not be interested. Knocking on doors, calling through the phone book. But if you're if you if if you're if you struggle with that, I would say that you lack passion in what we do. Because somebody that you talk to is going to die prematurely and leave their family with nothing and had to put their funeral on GoFundMe. So if you own the product, that's step number one. You shouldn't be doing this if you don't own the product. Because if you aren't willing to buy it yourself, how can you expect other people to buy it from you? Right, Angela? I mean, that, that comes I through. Your what that looks like. If that looks like $50 a month, then get yourself a policy for $50 a month. Whatever it is, because Whatever they're going to ask you what you own. What are you going to do, lie to them? So right. buy it yourself. That means you believe in it. And if you believe in it, you can talk to people with confidence and conviction, and they're going to be able to tell that you own it yourself. Trust me, I own it to the tune of almost a thousand bucks a month. So I don't, I believe in it. I believe in having life insurance over a car payment. I let my car go back before I let my life, life insurance lapse because I was, as I told this person I talked to this afternoon, I was a byproduct of a family that had no life insurance. And I see the devastation it took on, it took on, on my, my, on my mom. My, and, and what she went through and her crying every day because she was left with nothing. Right. So oh, if you don't, don't have those emotions in your conversation because you haven't experienced that, then get yourself this little book here called the red letter language. If you need a link for it, let me know. I'll give it to you and use and, 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 and get in, get, read the stories and get passionate about what we sell and what we provide families. And then it'll come out in your conversation. But you know, you don't need leads. And I said, that you need to have that. That's part of the skill set I think you need to have in this business. The ability to, to generate a conversation with somebody that you do not know about what the product that we offer that will save their family's lives, potentially, if they die without, if, if their major breadwinner dies without life insurance and they, they, they lose that income, they lose their house, they lose everything, potentially. So uh, that to me is, Angela, would you not say it's, that's, that would be a skill number one that everybody needs to have? I mean, everybody needs to have that. Right. And, you know, you, the other thing that I, after I write an application with somebody during the application, during the, the uh, you know, during the appointment, I tell them, uh, okay, I'm going to just before, I, just so I don't forget, uh, oh, not a business card. Um, I let them know that I'm going to, and I hold it up and I say, okay, uh, Steve, when we're done here today, I'm going to stick a business card, one of my business cards that has my picture on it. I'm going to stick it in the mail to you and a little thank you card. And, uh, if you have any questions or you need anything, or you know of anybody else that I might be able to help send, uh, I'll use my business card, right? You're welcome to pass it along or pass my information along. I wrote a policy for a couple that bought a new house. It was their second marriage. They bought a new house in a town not far from here. Um, when we were done, unbeknownst to me, she had called her very good friend who had just lost her husband and was on the verge of losing her house and had a young son. So the client that I wrote called me and said, uh, who can, can I give you, can I pass my, your name and number on? So I wrote the friend a policy. Then the friend said, my brother doesn't have any insurance. Is it okay if he calls you? So from that one scenario, I've written, I think, four, maybe five policies that I have to go back and look. Just because people passed along the word of mouth, because I put out there what I did and that I could do it for somebody else, even if they didn't fill out a form. So yeah. means they were not, they're not leads. So again, uh, what we're trying to tell you is you, you get out a notepad, yellow pad, whatever it is, make a list, go through your phone contacts, learn to talk to people that you don't know. Go, you know, if you need to build a lead budget, 
so you can scale your income. If you look, if you're if you're looking to make you know a couple thousand bucks a month or a thousand bucks a month, you don't need leads. You can do that through just having conversations with people, right? Uh, you know, Angela knows that every worker that comes into this house, I have a conversation with every single worker, and we're going to show you that at the end of, at, at the end of this, this show tonight. Everybody, no one comes in, comes into my house without knowing what I need, what 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 I do for a living. And I do that by getting involved in their lives. That's what Angela was talking about. If you ask somebody about them, they'll go, about them and their kids and their family, their, you know, they're about their lives, they're going to turn around and ask you the same question. And then you have the opportunity to, to, to discuss what you do and how important it is to their lives. Get good at that. And then, cause I think that's skill number one. And then first of all, skill, you need to own the product. Skill number one, and then that's that's why you we that that's the that's the power of working leads is to be, is is because the other methods are, are you know I mean I can't have somebody in my house every day working on the house, right? <laughs> I can't buy a car every day, right? So those methods are not uh, consistent. Putting a putting your business card in a laundromat is not consistent. The, the, all those methods can work. But they're not; they won't produce consistent income. You do that through leads and knowing and talking to people that have a have a definite interest. Lunch and learns, whatever. All right, so that that's the point, and we're going to demonstrate that at the end of the call. Uh, Angela is going to is going to show that, and now it'll also tell you what the reason for my outfit is. Angela, any closing thoughts that you want to add? Uh, I don't have a happy uh, Labor Day weekend. Oh, yeah. It is and, Labor Day weekend. Um, but you, uh, you know, if you're not where happy you want- and safe. Yeah, happy and safe, and uh, spend some time sharing with other people what it is that you do. Don't leave. Don't leave yet. Don't leave. We got something to show you. Don't go. Angela, we need to go outside and cue that up for everybody. Okay, let's go. I'll catch you outside. Voluntarily, can you believe that? Why anybody move here voluntarily? I know it's pretty crazy. Yeah, but I love it. You know, outdoors like this all day long. Got a nice tan. Can't beat it. Nice pair of sandals. You got a good tan. Yeah, a nice shirt. And you're pretty cute. And you gotta have a floppy hat. And you have to have a floppy. Gotta have a floppy hat to drop a tripod. Well, I brought this out to you to help cool you off and to say that you are doing a great job. And uh, my husband. Well, it's just grass cutting, not real. Well, we really appreciate you coming out on such short notice. You know, my husband and I just don't have time to, to keep up with it. You know, we work from home, but it doesn't give us a lot of time for yard work. Yeah, that's true. I got lots of time for yard work, but that's what I do for a living. Yeah. Help pay, pay, you know, put food on the table for the kids. It's food on the wife, table. keep roof red, you know. She don't like living in a, you know, in a, you know, in a camp, <laughs> camper, you know. We've done that before. Yeah, so, yeah, so what do you got to do? Well, uh, we actually work to help families uh, to make sure that, you know, if, if, the, if the breadwinner doesn't come home, that, you know, the wife and kids don't lose the house and, you know, the kids can still go to college or go to school and, you know, put food on the table. So that's what we do. We yeah, my wife would be screwed if I, if, I, if, I didn't, if I couldn't drive this tractor and cut grass because she has to stay home with the kids. Yeah. She, that's... Can't go out and, she used to work a job, but then I couldn't work. I like that. I like that arrangement home. better, actually, personally. I could stay home and let her work, but the, you know, that only lasts for so long. But you know, she, uh, yeah, she has to take care of the kids, and uh, she does the homeschooling, and so I'm the I'm the, I'm the one that uh, goes there every day and brings home the bacon. What 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 would happen if you didn't if you couldn't do that? What happens if you don't come home? Well, she had to find some other good-looking guy to hang out with, I guess. <laughs> no, I, they they uh, she I don't know what she would do. She. Uh, Cause she, I mean, she could work, but she didn't. I mean, you gotta take care of the kids. How many kids do you have? Five kids. Five. Yeah, we've been busy. That must keep her busy. Yeah, if you're not, you're not cutting grass. You're doing something else, you know. <laughs> so yeah, 
So she has to, you know, she works. I mean, you know, it, it would be tough. It, 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 uh, I don't know how she would do it because my mom was the same way. My mom was a stay-at-home mom too, and and my dad was 100 of of the income in the household. So it was, uh, you know, I don't know what she would do. Well, you know, I, I I'd be happy to put something together and you know maybe set a time to, to talk to you and your wife and just put together you know some sort of a plan that you, you know if something happened to you or if you were too sick and couldn't work you know sometimes there's worse things than 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 dying you know if, you, if you're too yeah. sick and can't work now she's got kids to take care of and 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 you got medical bills too so what about college and stuff like that how do i how do i i mean we need to put something together for that too i guess yeah. I mean, you know because they don't have any you guys do that too we absolutely do well you know what we should What's do the cost? You know, I don't know. I've got grass for a living, you know. I don't make a whole lot of money. Yeah. It's a tough job. Yeah, you can't get, rely on your I mean, good looks I, anymore. I got customers like you. They're cheap. They don't pay well. <gasps> yeah, so I'd be, I'd be interested in, you know. Well, you know what we need to do? I don't know how much it would cost until, okay. I, until I sit down and get some information from you guys. But you know what we'll do? When you're done here today, let's set a time for tonight or even tomorrow night. And uh, I'll, I'll call you and your wife. And we'll put together, we'll come up with some, with some numbers and see what we can here's the bottom line something is better than nothing yeah well you know my wife and i were afraid about the other day you know because of covid we, you know, we, we you know you never know when you when, you, when you're going to be taken out that's right. That's right. you know and a lot of things change and we all you know i mean everybody's known somebody that, that didn't make it through covid we've had two friends pass away because of covid and that's what does think that you know something would happen you know they were young and uh, you know 45 48 and uh, got covid and didn't come home in the hospital and i go you know that's you know no one's guaranteed Right. And, uh, and like right. I said, she re they rely on my income, so uh, I'll, I'll make sure if something happens to me that they can. And I'll tell you this: house and I, uh, you know, I specialize in finding something that fits your budget. I, 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 it's rare that I that I can't find something that that we can we that we can kind of squirrel into the budget to make it work uh, so that it's affordable and you don't you don't go broke, yeah. but you have a little peace of mind. So, you know, let's, um, you know. I can give you guys find out if your wife's going to be available tonight or tomorrow night. Okay. You know we can do either six o'clock or seven o'clock, and I'll give you guys a call. Doesn't we got to come over here because we got five kids. You don't want five no, kids in the house. No, we don't allow kids in our house. Uh, <laughs> I don't blame you for that. So. So yeah, you can no, come over we'll and talk to them, talk to her about it. Uh, well, okay, because she's you know she's the boss. We'll do that, and uh, we can either sit down if you prefer to do that, or I can just call Not you. Not my tractor. And we, and we go over it on the phone. Well, I was thinking. You pointed on my tractor. You ain't no less than my tractor. I, I make a living with this tractor. Nice tractor. This is it's, probably the nicest tractor I've it, it ever really seen. It really is a nice tractor. All right, well that's good. I, I mean, okay. I'll, I'll let her know, and we'll give, give us a call, and we'll make a time. And uh, you know, if it fits in our budget, absolutely, we'll find something. And uh, yeah, because we've been talking about that, we need to we need to do something because you know she can't work. She's she's uh, got to take care of the kids. Okay. I appreciate that. Well, Thank I'll let you very you much. Finish, that's, and that's, then uh, we'll pick a time. All right. Thanks. I gotta go back to work. My, my, like I said, yeah, because I need my, this grass. My, my clients, they don't pay well. <laughs>